All right, I got Dan Smith still in the studio uh, with Vail Mountain Rescue. We were talking before about avalanches and how to be prepared for them and snowmobile rescues and things in the backcountry. Now, Dan, you have your statistics for the year. Always, um, every month. You, you always show up with that, along with your printout from the avalanche from CAIC's website about the avalanche safety and danger. Let me right see it here. Real quick. Let me just see it real quick. I'm not, I'm not going to show it to you, but I want to read it to you real quick just so people are aware of it. Uh, we have moderate above tree line, moderate at tree line, and moderate below tree line, right? Oh, that was yesterday. This is, uh, oh, we're on green, green now. So it's low today. So everything is low today. But still, that does not mean... Low does not mean safe. safe. It does not mean it is not go. Safe. Low doesn't mean go. No. Okay. We work on, on one simple rule on anything in the winter, and mostly most things in the summer. All to go, one to say no. Yeah. If one person in the party says, no, we're not going there, I'm not going there, then nobody goes there. And I think that's a good rule of thumb for anything oh, outdoors, is. whether you're going on a bike ride, whether you're going kayaking, anything. If you have one person that's not fully engaged, then communicate well, about it before you decide to go. Group dynamics is what kills people in avalanches, right. generally. They sweat like hell to get up the top of Uneva Peak. It's what, about a two hour skin to get up there. And you look down at that snow and say, okay, let's be safe. You dig your pit, you do a jump test, you do a compression test, and they all turn out badly. Then somebody's got to say, let's just go back down through the trees and call it a day. Uh, and if the group dynamics generally, unless the people all know one another and, and have worked together before, there'll be one person in that group that's going to say, oh, no, I, we've got to ski this. We worked too hard to get up here. And they will ski it, and then they will probably see us. Yeah. If they're still alive. That's good information. I want to shift gears a little bit. I want to shift towards what's coming our way. The snow's about to melt. Granted, we don't have as much snow as we've had in the past years, but the river levels are they're going to rise. That water temperature is freezing cold, mm -hmm. and I've seen people with kayaks on the roof of their cars driving around already. I hope they're not just storage. Uh, I think they're just storage. Uh, we, I hope, we hope but so. We don't, we hope so but you don't know. We've sure. already had one kayak mission. Where was we had, that? This was down in Gypsum. We had a canoe wash out of somebody's backyard and float down towards the Colorado oh and gosh. get flipped on an island in one of our blizzards. So we had to put a boat in the water in a blizzard to well, go and, after an upside down canoe. And we talk about this in the summertime too. If you see, someone sees a boat in the river, they light you up don't the know phone. if there's a body associated nope. with it. And it's very important to have your name and a phone number on your gear. This one did. Unfortunately, the name was 15 years old. but. We daisy chained through him and found the, the owner of the canoe, and he was very happy that we'd gotten his canoe and he got his canoe back. But at least through that daisy chain, we had to use police to do it through right. uh, sheriff's office. Uh, we can make sure there's nobody in the water. Uh, generally, what will happen is somebody's roommate or spouse or significant other will report somebody missing. But a lot, some people live alone. Yeah. And it'll be days before somebody will report somebody missing. We kind of like to find it before that. Yeah. It's, it's been an interesting year we've had so far. Not the season, but the year. 11 snowmobilers, 14 skiers, snowshoers, or snowboarders, one hiker, one hunter, three vehicles, one kayak, in this case a canoe, yeah. uh, one avalanche, but we didn't go on it. It was out of our county. We were on standby for it. And four things that could only be described as other. Uh, every now and then we get things that just other. defy categorization. <laughs> and they, they're... Uh, People can do some marvelously uh, um, unfortunate things. I'm trying to pick the right word right. here. I could just imagine. Uh, yeah. They do some very unfortunate things from time to time, and we have to go clean it up. Okay. Um, Sounds good. So we're, we're happy to do it. I mean, nobody's, right. nobody's getting paid, and uh, nobody's getting blackmailed okay. into coming into Mountain Rescue, but we have uh, 20 new people <laughs> going in the Swiftwater class uh, because it, that is a very right. specialized area. We have... Oh, a half a dozen folks on the team that are very good, very experienced river guides, and they're teaching okay. the class. We've had one classroom already. We'll have three dry lands in the parking lot on various rope things. Uh, okay. And then by that time, somebody will do something dumb in the river, and here we go. Here we go. Thanks. Pleasure. Thanks for sticking around, Dan. Oh, yeah. I appreciate it. It's always good information. <laughs> Once again, Dan Smith, Vail Mountain Rescue. Um, just don't make any mistakes in the backcountry. Use your brain out there every day of the year. We've got a look at your weather forecast coming up and more Good Morning Vale on this beautiful sunny Monday. We'll be right back.